Welcome back to Card Salad. We are going over actual Everfest cards. <clears throat> uh, this would be like day zero, day one, day two spoilers. Um, we are past the heroes. And now we get to look at uh, junk like Amulet of Haven Call. Busted card. Whoa. Why is it busted, Bill? Because it Everybody doesn't work very good. Busted in the wrong direction. I thought you were going to point out the one thing it can do, and that's pop phantasms. Uh, it can pop phantasms! Whoa! Okay. That actually yeah. is a good point. I did you not think of that, that one. Okay, you're right. I'm I'm wrong. This card's amazing. 10 out of 10. Let's go next. <laughs> Nothing else to be if, said. If Prism has smashed you in the face so hard that you have no cards in hand, and this is on the field, she better not throw another phantasm at you. <clears throat> Hold on. I just thought of another line. Go on. They attack with blue Herald of Protection. Okay. You put four cards down <laughs> to block it. None of them are six attack, right? You're now blocking like 12 on this five attack. Defense reaction. You no longer have cards in your hand, so you may use this defense reaction. Go find Red Rally, the rear guard. Pop the phantasm. They have to pay for phantasmal footsteps or they can't continue their turn. How do you do it? How do you find these lines? How are you so good at this game, huh? <laughs> that seems know. very good. You're right. I don't know if you heard, but I'm single digits. All it cost you was having an amulet already on the field and a full hand. And you did it. You made them pay an extra one. How did I not think of that? <laughs> How does he do it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Busted as you can tell, I'm I'm pretty low on this card. This card does not seem good in pretty much any scenario. I think the only no. way it could be made good is if you could also pull from your graveyard or banish zone. That do, that would be a lot better. Um, I another just run it. I still would not run it. Yeah, this card's still not great. Another downside to this card is now you're running really the rear guard in your deck. So <laughs> yeah. now you're you have three slots. Card, that are... you're running a card that doesn't block. <clears throat> And is rarely usable, and a card that blocks for two, and is just like a whatever mediocre attack. I mean, it can block for five if you discard it, whatever. But it, no. Yeah. Right. Plus, to activate this, you have to have used every other card in your hand to block. If that last sentence isn't just, there, yeah. maybe usable. This yeah. has yeah. this has a use cases. If it doesn't say you have to have no cards in hand on. Yeah. It. Yeah. So you're like like. What La La Land are you like? You're playing a match. These cards are in your deck. You throw this down. You're going back and forth. Your opponent gets the upper hand. They go. Let's say they go. They go to one and they to like pivot back into you. They go all in. You block with all four cards. They swing the final blow for two damage, and you go hold on defense reaction. You go search your deck. You pull out your rally the rear guard. You go block for two. And they're like, Jesus Christ, I've lost this game. I can't. You win nationals, you grab that trophy, you bring, <laughs> you kiss your girlfriend, everyone's cheering for you. Yeah, I'm sure that's going to happen someday. No, this card is terrible. There's no way around it. The last line absolutely obliterates the card. It yeah. it doesn't, It there has to be more coming because Rally the Rear Guard has the, you're like, oh, hold on, you pull this card out that can like then pump itself. But you have to have no cards left in your hand, which means you yeah. cannot activate Rally the Rear Guard's ability <laughs> yeah. to discard a card to gain three armor. So there has to be what we have to see like another thing of Haven Call. And it, there's going to be like a crazy meme deck that has all of this Rally the Rear Guard synergy. And it'll be like, you do this, you block with it. And then it's like, now draw five cards out of your deck named Rally the Rear Guard. And it's like, yeah, you would have to have like an item or something that lets you draw a card, and then in response to activating that item, activate this one, and then you get to play your rally the rear guard. This thing resolves. You get to draw your card, pitch that card to rally. And now you're blocking for five. That's a lot of setup for to block for five. Yep. Yeah, anyways, it's a one. Yeah, I'm you're ending your one deck here. Yeah, forward. this is a one. Also, we spent way too much time talking about a one. So okay, but we had to go through. We had to explore the use cases. Let's do a video for each card. It's a one. <laughs> hey, more garbage. Um, Dude, oh, this didn't card. know they were doing a crossover with League of Legends. <laughs> that is the that is what I get, um, or what I imagine in my head when I see the 
this card is. Yeah, that's, it's that's named after the League of Legends TV show, the hit show Arcane. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dude, I see the <laughs> All right, we have generic equipment offhand, arcane barrier one, rare. Um, yeah, it's just like if you're a one-handed hero, you can, or if you have a one-handed weapon, uh, you can put this in your offhand and have an extra arcane barrier. I think it's pretty good. Not game breaking. Brandon, tell him why he's wrong. Uh, you're wrong for so many reasons. <laughs> no, I think that it's just it's it's pretty strict in the fact that it's a Offhand equipment. A lot of heroes are running two-hand weapons. I mean, we could that could change in this set. But a lot of equip, uh, heroes are running two-hand weapons. Uh, I could see maybe like Oldham running this as offhand. You're not running shield against wizard, so you could run this as an offhand. I just don't think if you're uh, Katsu or let's say you're playing Blitz, Ira, I don't see this being better than Zephyr Needle or even just a second Kadachi. So I just think the the amount of heroes that would want this are pretty limited. And for Oldham, sure. If you have an extra slot, throw it in. Why not? But for the other heroes, I just don't see it being great. Yeah, if you really want to blow... Uh, hold on, I have to phrase this. Kano. If you really want to blow Kano out of the match, go ahead and c put this in your uh, sideboard and, um, you know, Arcane Barrier 5 the guy. But, like, Oldham's already a tough matchup for Kano. I mean, you're activating Heart of Ice every turn, so they don't hit you on your turn. Mm. Um, you you know you got a lot of damage prevention. This seems like overkill for old him. Although that is the best place I see it because, you, like you said, you're not using a shield. So this is like an old him card, and like in some reality, Ninja gives up one Kodachi to mitigate wizard damage. But like, yeah, I don't know if that's worth it. Um, this is another like note. Hmm? We have not seen any of the more than likely four weapons in the set. It's true. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. We got a weapon reveal tomorrow, but as of now, just mostly two hand weapons. Yeah. So and this card could be good in the future, but for now, it just seems pretty mediocre. I think it's will... dead middle. I do think the full art is gorgeous. Oh yeah, the full so art is amazing. fantastic. Amazing. Yeah. And I swear, in my exhaustion this morning, that's the one I used for this art. <laughs> but oh well. Yeah, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's beautiful. I'm uh, I'm honestly at like a three on this just because it's like it has no use right now. I'm gonna give it a five. I think it's right wow. in the middle. Right in the middle. Yeah, I think uh, I'm gonna agree with Justin on this one. Currently a three. I could see it being better in the future, but for now, it just seems pretty whatever. Not for everybody. I didn't note that I was gonna give every card a ten until the full set's revealed, but I don't know if I can stick with that. What'd you give, Mitch? Five. We'll call it four. Cross the board. <laughs> right down the middle. All right. Moving on. We have bingo. 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 Card's broken. Boom. <laughs> Headshot. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. <laughs> no. Uh, this card seems really good. Um, one for five is just pretty good. Uh, the ceiling's very high. The floor is very low there's not a whole lot of instants running around right now but if they do hit an instant or an item this card is just not amazing but even then one for five still blocks for three just seems one solid all around one for five it exists, hits the but one for five block for three is very yeah cool. yeah. yeah this is um, a really this, good card yeah this was uh this w actually spawned a lot of um i don't know this what you, God, i'm like the english language not in my head today. Difficult. It was uh, when like controversy. Yeah, uh, two sides. It's very uh, polarizing. Polarizing. Yeah, it's polarizing. Yeah. Um, people were like, "This card is literally garbage. You're out of your mind." And people were like, "This is insane." But I, yeah, it's somewhere in between. Um, it's like like you said, high highs, low lows. Yeah, people who classes that don't have that have all access to a lot of reactions, you're just kind of like you're never gonna get an effect off of it. But it's mm -hmm. it's good damage. Super, like a tunic, you could block. You could be like forced to block with three cards and tunic this in for five damage. Like, it's good. I think, uh, I think it is exponentially better with Rune Blade with creepers in the field. I agree with that. Uh, because in the unfortunate circumstance where your opponent only has non-attack actions in their hand, it's phenomenal card. 
Yeah. Five the drawing cards is amazing. Or they like but, drive you know, all your black and they miss. Yeah, they reveal. They're like, "Oh, well, it doesn't have go again, so I'm gonna let him draw a card." And then you're like, "Well, bam, creepers!" You can even draw the card and then creepers if you like draw not attack action. Yeah. So yeah, for, it's got fringe use for sure, and it's it's a playable card in several instances. But I think I would put this in like my Briar deck. Yeah, it seems really good. I mean, you swing this in, they reveal a card, their course from triggers, and they gain a life, and then uh, you go next. But um, no, realistically, the card seems really good. A lot of people right now are running Snapdragon Scalers for one or two targets in their deck. This seems like a very good target. If uh, they reveal an attack action, just don't pop them. Save them for something else, like an E-Strike for seven. And if they don't, you get to give it go again and draw a card, or just give it go again and deal five. Yep. There's. And like you said, blocking three is huge. There's very specific matchups where this is, like, a super threatening card. Like, class, some people only have attacks and non-attacks. Um, and those cards are those classes are going to have a hard time thinking about how to block this card. But then there's some matchups where you probably just sideboard it because you don't want it. They're going to reveal an instant or they're going to reveal a, a reaction. And it's yeah, you're not bringing this in against, like, Oldham or Prism. Or Dorinthia. But, or, yeah. You know. But in the aggro mirrors especially, right. it seems very good. Yeah, um, I like it. I'm willing to give Bingo as high as like a seven. I was gonna go six. I'm thinking eight. I think this card's really good. I mean, obviously you cited that like we talked about, but when it's in, it's amazing. Oh wait, there's a ping pong paddle. <laughs> the bump it up a point. What? Oh, I see it now. <laughs> yeah, six. Uh, I got. I think I gotta be with Justin as well. I think this is seven. Until we get a little bit more support. Yep. Good question. Good. Is Bingo the name of the clown or is Astier the name of the clown? Oh. That's a good question. From the because if it's if it's Astier, this card loses a point for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. The Bingo the clown is, is such a better name. I was actually just assuming it was Bingo. I didn't even see the flavor text down there. It's gotta be Astier. No, nope, this is an eight. This is a there. seven now. I took it back. Seven. Even bigger than that, zero cost, red, instant, generic instant, rare card. Play even bigger than that, only if you've dealt, <clears throat> I don't know what to call this, attack damage, physical damage, this turn. Um, Does physical this, damage work for this? So something like uh, Shock Charmers work for this? I don't. I mean, you'd have to be hitting anyway for Shock Charmers to go off, but. Oh, yeah. I, I, I think, I believe with that symbol there, this has to be a card overcoming your opponent's armor value. Okay. So like, yeah. an attack yeah. action has to be hitting. That's it's a what good I mean. old attack. Yeah. Hit damage. I'm no, I'm no L1, but uh, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. <clears throat> so you hit with an attack. You've dealt damage this turn. Opt three, then reveal the top card of your deck. <clears throat> if it has attack greater than the amount of damage you've dealt this turn, create a quicken token and draw a card. Uh, I like it. I, I I think it's pretty strong. Um, there's a lot of different decks that you could really put this into. Um, you know, uh, I, th I think we've been talking about Ninja, big one. Um, you know, it, it's just gonna be getting getting you another quick and some more go again and drawing more cards. Um, I, th I think it's pretty strong, and it being an instant that re really changes. changes yeah, I think too. Ninja specifically seems like the best case scenario for this because you want to do not a whole lot of damage on your first hit and the game plan of Kadachi Kadachi becomes so much better since they always want to block the second one. Well, not always, but almost always want to block the second one. The first one gets through for one and you get to flip three. Almost any attack in your deck is going to create a token and draw a card. Seems amazing. On the flip side, it blocks for zero, so there's that. But yeah. Here's the question. Is there going to be a blue for opt one and a yellow for opt two? Most likely. Yeah, it's a non-item and it's just a rare. Yeah. There's a good chance we see a yellow and a blue. Same. As of right and the second, I like it in in some of my decks for some play plans, but we'll see. Yeah, I also agree that it seems really good in just aggro in general. Um, 
but not amazing. I think Ninja is really the, the best case scenario, and everything else is just pretty good. It's also a great way to um, create an arsenal for yourself. Yeah. So. Yeah, and like you can you can trigger this off a way more than just a Kadachi if your opponent blocks like. You send out like a medium or large attack, and they block, and they take like two. You can still have a really easy time triggering this off the top. Yeah, it seems really good for the spell blades in general. Yeah, it can. It can I actually momentum. Yeah, I'd like to arsenal this in Reiner, and then when I hit like a pulping turn. Yeah, that'd be. That'd that could be, be pretty good play off of pulping because they're probably gonna block for three. And then yeah. any any attack, you, you just choose an attack you want to follow up with. Yep. Yeah. Decent. Seems really good, too. Yep. I mean, the card, uh, like most cards here, have had really high ceilings. Um, I would give it probably a 7 for the cards, for the decks that want it. It seems very niche, but when you do want it, it seems great. I like it most as a turn ender, like setting up that arsenal. Because, like... <clears throat> If you're ending a turn, if you're, like, digging one card deeper and playing another, like, whatever you draw, you kind of waste the Quicken token probably a lot of the time. Maybe not Ninja quite as much, but, like, I like I like the idea of setting up a Quicken token and then putting a new card, a, a card in Arsenal, and then next turn you're just, like, you're going to go crazy. Um, but, like, mid, uh, like, Ninja beginning a combo with this can, like, also be insanely powerful. Um, I think it's like a, I gotta say seven, it's the fact that it doesn't block and it's like kind of niche besides like the cases we stated that were pretty obvious. Um, yeah, I'm on not, seven too. Yeah. May not see play much more than Ninja for consistency reasons. Yeah. I, I think. I kind of want to give it an eight. I, I got some ideas for it of, of what I'd like to maybe try to do with it. It seems like a fun card to to build with. I don't think it's really a card that I'm going to build a deck around, but I think it it, it could just really help out in some some cases. So I'm I'm interested in playing with this. Mm. Shane Shane was the other hero that was like pretty obvious. This works with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brandon, what are you at? Seven. Average let's say this. Eight. Let's say this does come in yellow and blue. Do you think you ever play those ones? I mean, I opt two, know. opt one, opt one seems rough. But Ninja likes blue sure. zeros. Yeah, blue zero. Yeah. Yeah, opt one's kind of trash, but it's another yellow that never gets played. You do get to look I... at two. You get two chances off an opt one because you get to bottom it. If it's not a attack with greater oh, than yeah, then you reveal the yeah. So you get two looks, yeah. But even then, the yellow is more likely to see play than the blue, though. Opting two yeah. is just so much safer. Um. Anyway, moving. Fire breathing. This was kind of a controversial card. <laughs> Correct. Uh, <laughs> Brandon, take us. You can swing for twenty. You can swing for twenty. Ten. There you go. Moving on. <laughs> Ten, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, this card, like I've been saying it a lot, high, high ceiling, pretty mm -hmm. low lows. Um, I just don't know what deck you want this in because yeah. three for three, but the cost two is pretty expensive already. And a lot of the aggro decks are not running a lot of blues. You have chain runs a good amount of blues, but this seems mediocre in chain. Um, Earthbriar, maybe. But even that deck is pretty tight. You have a, you need to take your ratios for your fusing and everything. So I think this card seems pretty good. I just don't know where you'd put it. Ooh, actually, you saying that Earthbriar makes me kind of think. Uh, you put this in there. You want Channel Mount Heroic to stay around for another turn. You just pitch two blue Earth cards, and then that thing's swinging for for more. You got Channel Mount Heroic around for another turn. Yeah. You know, that uh, not 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 the greatest thing in the world, but. If use. you happen to have fire breathing and three earth blues with yeah. already yeah. on the field, you're like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're paying nine for ten. Yeah. So 
13. So this card, I didn't, I forgot to read the card. Cost two. So I, oh, it's majestic. So it's only red. Cost two. Attacks for three base. Blocks for three. It's good. Instant. Not once per turn instant. Pay one. Fire breathing gains plus one. Activate this only while it's attacking. For those so, magic players out there, this effect is legitimately called fire breathing. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, the fact that it lets you pitch stack is pretty good. Um, I don't know yeah. when you want to just dump your whole hand into this, but there are turns where you just want to get a card into your pitch. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, you have to pay two or... Like, uh, yeah, paying two is pretty hefty. I tell you what. This card has a terrifying future plan. Like build because a, an OTK there or... is such a thing as power creep, and there's no way you can get away from it entirely. Hmm. There's going to be some efficiency at getting resources eventually, and when that happens, fire breathing is going to be disgusting. Oh, yeah. When you take three fire breathings for 12 in a game, it's not going to be okay. You can already yeah. get there. Like, you can already build a combo deck out of this. You, It's Probably yeah, very meme. Three, four blues in hand. You could do e pots. You could do if you really wanted to. You could do crazy brews. <clears throat> um, you can do. Uh, this rounds on me was gonna you p if you pitch a blue for this rounds on me. You both draw a card, but if you draw like another blue or something, you're net positive or even a yellow. Actually, if you even draw a red, you're positive. If you played the card you pitched. I don't know. You can get extra cards, extra resources that way. Um, well, you'd rather uh, just have two blues than this round's on me. Because you pitch a blue for this round's on me, you have two. You draw another blue, now you're at five. If you just have a two blues, you're at six. Oh, okay, yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. Playing the card, yes. Yeah, playing the card is a, a net loss. Mm -hmm. um, okay, but there was something I was thinking about earlier that also... There was something that drew cards. I don't know. There's, there's, you could do some like really out there wild La La Land uh, setups to like do like 24 damage with this thing. Mm -hmm. But like, that's your entire game plan. Like, th that's obviously not going to be a deck that's functional um, <clears throat> or effective. The, the, the thing is, is like, where does, what deck does this go in that has room to put in a card that might help you end a game by putting your opponent in a position where they're like, I don't know how much to block for? That's pretty much the use of this card, unless right. you're a deck that's completely chock full of on hit effects, and you're just looking for more tricky ways to like make electrify hit or something of that nature. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, the card seems okay. I'm not entirely down on this card, and like Bill said, the future for this card seems amazing. But for now, it just seems okay. I, I I feel like we're missing something for it, like something that they still have yet to release, or something that we just haven't gone and like looked at. Because uh, why? Why would they have made this a majestic? We gotta that be missing means something. it's good. That mm, means good. Put it in my deck. You flip that over, that's a W. That's a win right there. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I fail to see when you would ever like. Obviously, you can see the uses for it. But, like, when is this ever making it into your deck? I honestly don't. Like, you'll never be in that scenario because it shouldn't be in your deck. I'm kind of at a three right now. Yeah, I'm dead. I'm pretty low on this card, too. This seems like a limited all-star, but we don't get to do limited in this set. So, yeah. it seems pretty... In Constructed, it seems pretty mediocre. I would also give it a three. Maybe a four. I think it's a little bit better than a three. I'd give it a four. I'm yeah, I was going to say four. Yeah. And with that, I'm going to step away while you guys start the next card. All right. Next card. I oh, baby. Card. Oh, <sighs> my God, they did it again. They put I me on two cards. You posed for this, huh? Yeah, you I did, posed? actually. What was I'm the, the guy card? holding the hammer. <laughs> I must have missed it. What was the other card you were on? Macho Grande. We haven't got to it yet. A little spoiler for you guys Ooh, watching this God. video that don't know the spoilers. I can't wait. How much did they yeah. pay you to pose for the card? I actually did it for free, just for the exposure. What a man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I'm Macho Grande. You're for the people. Yep. Is that what you, um, what did you get for dinner? Did you get food? What? Bill got food. 
Uh oh. I was you gonna say, did you did you buy your your dinner in uh, exposure? They were like, "Oh my God, are you the high striker?" <laughs> yeah, am I the strongest man in all of Wraith? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, high striker. This is a rare, rare red. So we probably have yellow and blue copies. Um, cost zero, blocks for two, generic action. The next time an attack you control hits this turn, create six copper tokens. Go again. Go again. Uh, That's a card. Mm, yeah. Well, we have some cards that are along this line, block two, non-attack action, that like actually give damage to your cards, and they're not played. So, unless we see, and I don't think cash in is good enough. If we need, we need to see some nutty uh, money synergy for this to be considered for anything. I don't know Dory very well, but does it, does this get run in Dory? Because she's got Spoils of War. I, I don't even remember what Spoils no. of War does. Spoils of War, Spoils of War is played because it gives your sword like plus three and go again. It just happens to also make tokens if it hits. Yeah, just because oh. why not? I think if we do get a yellow and blue, the blue does seem good in like Kasai. Because creating four puts you right at the number you need for cash in. Oh yeah. And being blue is just a good card. But um, outside of that, I blocking for two, not buffing your attack. I mean, this is in a four card hand. You are now down a card, so the chance of trying to get an attack through that's not buffed is just difficult. So I not very high on this card. But the blue I could see being played in some random little blitz decks. Consider yeah. this, Rune Blade, free non attack action. You can now put cash in in your deck. Drawing cards is extremely powerful in Runeblade. Hmm? No. Not a, not you, attack, you had attack, me at you had me at consider this Runeblade, and then you lost me with the rest of the stuff. <laughs> Runeblade was a good start, and then you followed it up with uh, cash in, <laughs> and uh, you lost me there. But no, yeah, blue seems good. The rest seem whatever. I'm gonna give it like a three. I just. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm pretty much at three. Yeah, as a non Kasai player, I don't know how tight your list is already. I don't know if you have room for this. If you do have room, seems great there. Everywhere else, this is like a two. Ooh, damn. Our lowest score besides the one the two ones we gave, so not the lowest. Sorry, score. Brandon. Yeah, I know. Sorry. Close for the worst points. card ever printed. <laughs> Well, hold on. Oh, right. The other one's like not really fun. There's me. There's the one I actually <laughs> posed for. The Nick Knack Brick a Brack. Brick a Brack. I don't want to play this because I don't want to tell my opponent. I'm going to play Nick Knack Brick a Brack. <laughs> They're like, oh, okay, bud. I didn't even notice this cost three. What does this do? Um, let's see. This is a majestic cost three to play. Red strip yet again. Blocks for two. Generic action. As an additional cost to play Nick Knack Bric a Brac, you may destroy any number of copper, silver, and or gold you control. Search your deck for a card with amulet, potion, or talisman in its name. Put it in the arena, then shuffle. For each four copper, two silver, and or one gold destroyed this way, repeat this process. That is a lot of text. It does not have a go again. Oh my god, you're right. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> this card is terrible. This card's not good. Uh, what about combo decks? What about the block. channel mount the channel mount heroic uh double fuse earth briar with the plos blossoming spell blade and uh or uh the the draw card thing, uh, I don't know. Yeah, less bad, not good. Uh and so don't see all of the amulets, potions and talismans. Energy it's potions. Energy potions are good. Be. Uh, Talisman of Dowsing? Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah there we go. Now you're thinking of the old noodle. Yeah. So uh, we, we build a, a ton of copper with that last card in, in Briar, and then we play this, and we go and pull out three E-Pots, and then uh, we set up our Mount Heroic nonsense. I don't know. Yeah, you get, so let's say best case scenario. Right now we have Energy Potion, Time Snap Potion, Potion of Strength. You also have Talisman of Dowsing. You also have Amulet of Haven Cult. 
You have the uh, elemental amulets. Uh, I oh, don't yeah, think yeah. if you're playing elemental, you want this card, so you're not setting up. This seems like a card you would play in Merchant. So in Merchant, you're not getting the elemental amulets. So you have Talisman of Dowsing, and you have the potions. I think, let's say Dream World, you get to go get, because we're young, we're a merchant, you go get to get two time snaps, two potion of strengths, two epots. <laughs> what are you doing with those? You still need card draw so that you can actually do something with all the action points. And your potions of strength being plus two is good. But in the time it took you to do that, you've, you've died four times. You're dead a million times in the time it took you to set up for that. The Plus, you're losing this turn. The setup here does seem like two thirds of your deck are garbage. You need to create that much money. Then you're going to play this and go find all these potions and shit that don't block and don't attack. So like half of your deck is cards that don't do anything. And then eventually you gain plus two strength and two energy. Yeah, yeah this seems like not great. Two. Yeah. That's what I'm art, here. The art is amazing. Art so far, I'm loving the art of the set, but... um, like Little green guy. Yeah. This card seems... I'm not a fan. I'm also going to give it a two. Yeah, yeah two. two. Just, there's still... We are just barely starting Everfest. There's still a million amulets, potions, and talismans we can get, but for now, this seems not great. Although, if you do get time snap, this... It pseudo has go again, right? Oh no, because you still have dominant action point to crack the time snap. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, never mind. So yeah, it has combo potential with a crazy meme deck, but no. Okay. Life of the party. This is our follow up to Nick Knack Brick a Brack, because you're gonna put Crazy Brews in play and then use Life of the Party's effect. So Two cost, generic attack action, swings for four at the red strip. It's a rare, blocks for two. You may discard or destroy a card you control named Crazy Brew rather than pay life of the party's uh, energy cost. I actually didn't realize that you could just discard Crazy yeah. Brew instead of destroy. Oh, yeah, that makes it a lot better than I thought. If you do... Choose all modes, otherwise choose one at random. So the modes are life of the party gains. When this hits, gain two life. Gain wait. When this hits, gain life two life. Yeah, for some reason the on the promo full art <laughs> version, this is correct. On this version, it's it's wrong. I don't know what happened. <laughs> but in the promo gain version it does say it does say gain two life. Gain, in the full art armory gain version. Gain life two life. Yeah, I mean, that's got to be just a printing error that's hopefully corrected, but because no, it is correct right. on the other version. <laughs> life of the Party gains plus two attack, or Life of the Party gains go again. So these are just the modes that Crazy Brew has, right? Oh, wait, yes. one of them would be gain two resources, which would be playing this card. You just don't get to choose where those resources go. Um, If you got all three, it'd be a six attack with go again. If it hits, you gain two life. But, like, we're not playing Crazy Brew. So I think that's pretty much all there needs to be said about this spell. Yeah, I think the card itself is decent. Um, I mean, even just choosing one at random. Four, two for four with go again is mediocre. Six for two is okay. Four gain two life on hit is not good for two. The other modes are pretty okay. But like and you said... Yeah, and a blocks for two. I think, like you said, the fact that you're playing Crazy Brew is just not a good look. It's not where you want to be. It also does not block for three. If it blocked for three, it might have like a little bit more legs, but like, mm -hmm. yeah. you I'm you can put generic it. two six two for sixes. You can put cards that gain you life. You can you can put higher damage numbers on a go again attack. It's just like, yeah, it needs I'm to be hitting all three. Four. So it four? It's a four. Yeah. A high number. I I, I think. There's, there's got to be some support for it. There's, there's got to be something else later on. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know about... Oh, maybe. You're three? Bill, three. what are you at? I know what I want. Three? Yeah, I was thinking three. I was thinking three, 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 three. 
I'd also give it a four. I think the card's okay. I don't think it's terrible. I mean, compared to some of the cards we've seen, like the amulet, I think this card's okay. Yeah, but on a especially scale, on a on a scale of horn of whatever the fuck amulet of haven call uh, to crippling crush, it's still it's four. Like, it's really bad. This is a card you could play in like your budget deck and not be hey, sad. There you are. This Ooh. is the one I post for. Oh, that, damn! That guy in the crowd with the white toga on? That's you? No. You. Hold on. You tell me you don't see the resemblance. I'm seeing Bye. it right. <laughs> you told me that's not me. <laughs> oh wow! You gotta see okay. it, right? Uh, I mean, I cut uh, my yeah, hair recently. I, yeah, the but, way your uh, arm kind of just like unhinged backwards. That was like. Yeah, that was on. uncomfortable. I think I did the wrong arm, but you get the you point. <laughs> <laughs> you get the point. You, you see it. Looking like Jason Mimosa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Guardian oh. attack action. Blocks for three, attacks for ten, costs seven. Dominate. That's uh, that's the card. Very it's, it's, I think that's it's a good card. card. Yeah. Uh, Interesting that this was revealed with Valda, and she does not give it Dominate. Well, just already has dominate. So. Oh, and it's not a crush. Oh, right. So. Yeah, it's, but it, I mean, it's not a crush card. I guess it already has dominate. Yeah. Um, I think you dominate see, seems good. I think this is the classic guardian. Like you're never gonna see the red or the yellow. This is a blue for eight. This is a yeah. blue eight attack. Like, why do they even print reds and yellows? Just give them the blue with an obscenely high number. Yeah, blue seems good. This is this is. With a seismic surge token, which you're typically making all the time, and if you're Valda, you might even make it for free. This is a glacial footsteps fused without having to fuse. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, especially in Blitz, like this is a great game ender. Just dominate, literally printed on it. Yeah, this seems better than glacial in almost every way. It doesn't get the buffs from things like weave or pulse, but other than that, it seems better in pretty much every way. It is seven by default when Glacial's only six, right? Yeah. So you do have to be making seismics to play this for only two cards. It's true, but we're it's Guardian, and we're gonna say they got they got it like that. They got the seismic. They probably got it like that. Tur turns out they made a seismic and swung Anathos at you last turn. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna give this thing a, a nine. Oh, that seems a little high to me. A little eight. Wide. Yeah, let's uh, let's uh, let's chill out a little there, Mitch. <laughs> seven. I give it a seven. Not a guy think, player. But I'm in the seven. Good. I'm in the seven realm. I think seven also. The uh, I mean, like we said, the blues, upping the blue count in Guardian, it's gonna get bigger and bigger. Um, yeah. so it's yeah, another just, big big like, draw for it. You just take like choke slam out, right, and put this in, or or what, whatever blue attack that's not at eight yet. They're eventually gonna be everything fucking swings for eight, and it's a blue, and you're like, okay. I guess I'll take eight. Yeah, I think depending on who you're putting this in, you're comparing it to five costs if you're playing Bravo. Because in Bravo, you just if you can you can dominate it with his ability, and then that card's just the same thing. The same cost at least. So I think for to compare this one, you're putting you're comparing it for other seven attacks. So but yeah, I think the blue seems good. Um yeah, not much more to say. We said it all. It's a it's either a seven or a nine. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Pick a card, any card. This is a zero cost. Generic action. Rare, though we probably have yellow and blue. Blocks for two. Look at target opponent's hand, then name a card. Choose a random card from their hand and reveal it. If it's an if it's the named card. Create a silver token. Repeat this process thrice. Go again. This is how you go to time, ladies and gentlemen, by forcing your opponent to play carnival games with you mid-round. <laughs> so this does it four times. You do it, and then you do it three more times. Don't think, make me oh, interact it with total? <clears throat> It says repeat this process thrice. Yeah. So, like, you've already done it, and now you're going to repeat it three more times. Um, I, I think the only way that you play this card is after they've already blocked 
and you, you cut it down to like a 50-50, or they have one card in hand, and yeah. you hope that they can't play it as an instant. The card is great if you get them down to one card and you slap this on the board, which you could, it costs zero. You could you could arsenal this and go all out, and then you're just like, I'm going to make four silver. You just you look at them and you go, I'm going to play this. We're not going to do the thing, right? I'm going to make four silver. You understand? Okay, I'm going to put four I'm making them do it. I'm making them show me their hand, and then they're going to shuffle it. They're going to get their one card, and they're going to spin it around on the table, and I'm going to guess again. <laughs> guess wrong one of the time. <laughs> yeah. No, you only guess one time. What? Well, you only pick a name once. Yeah, you only pick the name once. Then they flip. They do it for the flip four times. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's less fun then. Uh, um. Anyways, uh, I mean, it's got obviously like potentially insane money synergy, but you have to play this card that does nothing, while being aggressive enough to lower their hand to two or one cards. Then play this, build up the silver, then do something silly with the silver later. Um, always coming back to cash in. Always like it's a great card. If you do manage to do this, you get two uses of cash in, right? If you if you pulled off a one for four, you get you get to draw plus two cards later when playing cash in. I don't know if any of that's worth it, but that's that's the potential. Or you get two potions off of Nick Knack Brick or Brack. It's also an option. This card also, if you use it as your first card, you get to see their hand. So even if you don't hit the silvers, you can see what they're working with and decide if you want to Is take a turn off or pivot. Yeah. You, you prism players, you want this in your deck? No. 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 Absolutely not. No. Hey, no. Hold, hold on, Brandon. Cashin's yellow. Let me remind you. Cashin is yellow. Cashin is yellow. This card can come in yellow, hopefully. Cashin is yellow. No. No, we're not doing it. No. Wait. Relax, we're not doing it. So if you repeat were... the process twice, repeat once. the process once. Yeah. Is there, is there a weird word for once? No. Once. Repeat this process right. twice. Once. Twice. Just don't once. put it. Don't even put the once in there. Just repeat this process. <laughs> 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 there you go. Indefinitely. <laughs> Problem solved. Yeah. Um, I honestly have no idea what to rate this card. I mean, like we understand how you can get it to trigger four times, but like. The the thing is like, what are you doing with the silver? Yeah, man, I don't know. Might yeah, be. we just in general need a better way to use the coins that we make so far. Yeah, three. Yeah. Really yeah. hard to evaluate these ones without seeing the other money support. We'll give it a four because I like the hummingbird on it. I'm kind of. It's pretty good. I'll go to four too. Four, four. Bill, were you three? Yeah. Um, I, I, like think the I like the fish. I think it's reasonable to get two to four co silvers off of it. And silver, making the silver, I'm much more excited about than making a pile of copper. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to see a little more silver support in this set. Uh, potion of Luck. Got another potion. I actually really love this art. I think it's one of the cooler potions. We have a blue, blue pitch, zero cost, generic action item. Rare, instant, destroy, potion of luck, shuffle your hand and arsenal into your deck, then draw that many cards. So this is, uh, what's the hat, Bill? It's Hope Merchant's Hood, but you also get to use the arsenal. And it's not partial. Yeah, you don't get to choose how many, you just do it all. So the power of this card is extremely difficult to gauge because you never know what the value of a mulligan is going to be. You do, interestingly, do get to put your arsenal into your hand. So, like, you could go to a five-card hand and get to pitch whatever you want. Yeah. Like, could be a consistency booster for rune blades that are running, like, you know, 50-50 non-attack attacks. And, like, you know, you brick one turn and you just go, nope. Like, Channel Mount Heroic Briar, this could be a consistency booster for her. So far, the fringe case, I've personally thought that I could use it is... If I have one in hand, because it's a blue, and I don't mind that, is if I roll scab skins trying to get two action points and I get a six. If I can play oh. this down and save it in, in Levia specifically, not Reiner. In Levia, to get to that late game, where I somehow pull a hand that absolutely cannot get me out of blood debt. Yeah. And it kind of can save me there, but that's... 
still a not still a guarantee. Pretty, yeah, I think the the biggest thing holding this card back is it doesn't have go again. So you're this is your whole turn, or you're ending on this, and I don't think either one of those is a great option. And if you're pitch stacking, because you don't want this. Yeah, this also ruins your pitch stack. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I really like these play lines of cards like this, where you put it down now, and it's insurance for later, or like it might be useful later. Um, but it's like, the way the game is currently... Taking turns off like that, you're just giving your opponent so much tempo that you just you get dug into a hole. And unless you're just a full like uh, control deck, it's like you're never. It's really hard to get out of that pit. So like, I, Islander, Islander, might want to play this. Sure, I'm not sure how much she's gonna need to Maybe. mulligan, but like she can play it. I think she another problem with cards. Speed. Yeah. She, yeah. Pop it out on your opponent's turn. Yeah. For zero, for free. Oh, yeah. No, I think uh, it's hard to compare these cards because you have things like Time Snap Potion and Potion of Energy, or Energy Potion, that are just almost always better. Like, I yeah. mean, this card has very fringe cases that could be better, but those two other potions are just, they're almost, they're almost better in every scenario. Right. And <laughs> even those two don't see a whole lot of play. They see them, and you see them in, like, Chain, uses Time Snap. Bold and run energy potion, some other random decks run energy potion, but they show I up don't when think they this piece is integral cool. to like countering counterplay. Like, Chain needs time snap because he needs that super big Urser turn these days to get over like old him. Um, right. Bolton needs energy potion if he wants to not get beat by old him. They're all for old him. Um, <laughs> you're so, also praying your opponent plays this if you're playing Valda and you get to just make five seismics. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, oh, this is an instant. You could do this on your opponent's turn. I just mm. realized that. Oh, yeah. If you need a de-react, for uh, yeah, but whatever then reason. We're back in this land of, like, I took a turn off to put down maybe some insurance for the future. And yeah. Like, why not just not put yourself behind? <laughs> I, why why not know. get good? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, play, why don't you play good <laughs> cards instead, kid? <laughs> yeah. yeah the problem with setup cards is that often the setup is just not worth the payoff you'd rather just have a better card than this i want it to be that i want it to be worth playing but it's just not like it it just isn't right now in the current state of the game it would be cool if things like the, the game was slow enough where you could put this down and be like oh it was really cool it's all i love playing potion of luck it like gets me out of my garbo hands and i keep playing but like you literally just take a turn off and then give your opponent the game I don't know. I'm like a two on this. The more I look at the art, the more I like it. But it's beautiful. I hope it has a cold foil of some kind, like a promo or something. Like extended art, like the Arcane Lantern. Oh, that would be Maybe awesome. our carnival slot will be all the talismans and potions. Yeah. Yeah, I think the card, it's really cool, really pretty. I don't think it's very good. I'd give it a two. Maybe a three just because it's blue. Blues are pretty good. I think I'm at a three, yeah. Mm, yeah, three. Damn, I'm low ball here. That's some low numbers through the spoiler season so far. <laughs> I'm not sure. oh, yeah, these are looking pretty bad. And the the good cards are like Guardian stuff, of course. Guardian's just so fundamentally good. Hey, the last card does play around this one. They try to target it, and you just go, nope. <laughs> Instant react. <laughs> Smashing good time. <laughs> um. <sighs> So when you play this, uh, I'm going to read the card again. All right. Smashing good time, zero cost, generic action, blocks for two. It's a rare. So, yeah, probably going to have yellow and blue. Yep. It'll be plus two, plus one. Um, the yep. next time an attack action card hits a hero this turn, you may destroy an item they control with cost two or less. If smashing good time is played from Arsenal, the next attack action card you play this turn gains plus three. So... Obviously, Dash Killer, basically, is the first thing that comes to mind with this card. Um, but if you hit with this card and destroy something, do you get to go smashing? And they just look you, at you and they... You have to. You have to. It's required. <laughs> if you do that, I'm calling a judge. <laughs> My opponent is... This is not allowed. No, I think this card seems pretty good. Um, like you said, I don't think anyone... You're really bringing it against anyone but Dash. But when you do bring it in, it's really good. The fact that it gives plus three means that it's just almost 
almost never dead. There are turns where you'll want a five, a four card hand plus your arsenal, and this won't be in the arsenal. And it'll just be kind of a card that you're praying will you'll get an attack through. And now they have four cards to block, and it didn't get buffed. But I think uh, you're just bringing it in against Ash if you're on any kind of aggro plan. Seems good. Yeah. I, well, I think it's I think it's for the control. Honestly, other yeah. control. I. I well, can see old him wanting to run this. Actually, I can see yeah, that too. Control and aggro both want this because aggro, it's a it's a damage buff for aggro and potentially in Runeblade a non attack action to start the turn with, which is great synergy. Um, but yeah, slowing Ash, slowing Dash down, um, is not irrelevant in an aggro match. Even though they are mostly just taking your dan- like blocking. Um, they do tend to keep up in the health race by pistoling a few times. And if they, sometimes they get into these turns where like they might take a little bit of damage because they have their item ready and they like play it down and like they couldn't block with it and they didn't want to like arsenal it. Like they, they get it into play. They take a little bit of damage doing so. And that is ultimately going to keep them in the health race if they're hitting you with pistol like two times per turn, two or three times for two or three. Um, and then you come in with this, you get you get plus three, you make your aggro turn better, you destroy one of their, you target like their, go, their uh, induction chamber or something, and now they're on the back. They, they've taken that damage for that setup turn, they've taken time off, and now they've lost the item that was going to like keep up the health race. And like you could put, you, I could totally see this being a great addition to aggro to take dash down. But additionally, guardians have a horrible time with dash historically. And so, like, you put this on a crush with, or, like, a guardian attack with Dominate, <clears throat> and then, like, you just start whacking down her uh, induction chambers or plasma purifiers, and then, like, guardian actually has a shot at winning uh, the dash mashup. Yeah. Yeah, I think about that, it sounds good. I think the fact that it gives plus three makes this infinitely better than the other spoiler we saw earlier, the Mixed Hopper, the uh, High Striker. The fact yeah. that it can pump makes this card pretty good. The worst case for it is just so much higher than a lot of the attacks that make that make the next attack that hits do something, but don't pump. Yeah, cards are pretty ones, good. Yeah, those ones become instant memes. You're like, what if though? But you're like, yeah, the pump is so it important just here because even yeah, the if pump you, is huge. Let's say you start the game, you land one of these early, and Dash has literally no items. If you draw more, they're not dead because if you put them in Arsenal, it's a pump. Yeah. Yeah, the floor is pretty high, which is really good. I would give this probably a seven, somewhere in there. I was also thinking seven. I also agree with seven. Yep. Wow. We're just on the same page tonight. We're all in sync. What is the art, by the way? It's like a gremlin, like eating. Just breaking stuff. Just a goblin eating a. He's having a smashing a good time. Eating a bunch of items. Oh yeah. He's just breaking items. Is that a potion of luck? No, the photo's a little blurry. Like, no, that's just a this one right here. Just a, this looks like a regular uh, random items. Maybe we'll get those items in the future. Well, instead we have this one. We have the talisman of featherfoot. Um, talisman. Of, it is a yellow pitch, uh, zero cost generic item, rare again. Uh, items typically one are one color, so this is probably only yellow. Go again. When an, when an attack you control gains exactly plus one from an effect during the reaction step, destroy Talisman of Featherfoot, and the attack gains go again. This is unconditional. Like, or you have to. It has to trigger, right? That's what we discussed earlier. Right. Yeah. If you if you meet this condition, this triggers, even if you don't want it to. Yeah, it's not a May. Yeah. So, it will happen. I was thinking about it, and we talked about this earlier, and thinking it was for Dory or Kasai. I don't think it is. I think this lets Bolton take value Dynamo. I don't even know what Valiant Dynamo does. Interesting. Oh. I didn't think about that. Because you can pop Beacon of Victory... To give the attack plus one, then the talisman of Featherfoot breaks, then you can go on your combo turn, and you have had Valiant Dynamo for controlling a little more, blocking a little more of this game. Specifically, OTK Bolton. 
push. You don't have right to have now. snaps. Snapdragon. You don't, you don't have to have snaps regardless if your soul is big enough. Yeah. Beacon. The, the yeah, if your soul is big enough, but you're everybody's running snaps. Well, yeah, OTK. because well, the because the thing is that you play you play the zero cost attack action <sighs> snapdragons. It, you you had to charge, so you have three cards left total, and they're supposed to be triple lumina. Or I, one of them can be beacon, or two of them can be beacon to find the yeah. lumina. But so, I yeah, I don't know. I mean, I see how it fits in there, but I don't think it's like. Uh, an this exact also works because it's it's when it gets plus one from an effect, so that card can get plus three from Bolton, say from getting blocked by attack actions, and it still this still can pop because that effect gave it plus one one time, then plus one from the other attack, then plus one from the other attack. Yeah, you know, or whatever. So I just think I think it's a Bolton card. Now that I, now that just now that I thought about it. Yeah, I don't know if there's a current deck that really wants this. I think the card's very good. Um, I just don't know if there's anything that we are currently playing that really wants this. It works same problem. Right. Same problem. All the items have. It doesn't block. Uh, it does have go again, which is infinitely better than the other uh, yeah, items. That's very good. But I just, I, well, I just, I'm not a big fan of items in general. I think the time snap and the epod are pretty good, and everything else has been just pretty mediocre. Um, it seems okay in like ninja. You can run Bree scalers. All of a sudden, your combo card can gain go again. And plus one. Um, otherwise, I don't know. I don't see it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I do agree that it's, it's it looks really good in Bolton. It's just a matter of, like, do you want to put this in Bolton? Like, this, and it I, has I, go again. I, I think it'd be good in Raid in Bolton. Yeah, yeah I think it, it, it gives Raid go, go again, again makes it infinitely better. Yeah. It gets I weird I think I was wrong when they come item. up together. The, or, like, you... You kind of just, I mean, you just oh. pitch it, but I don't know. It is cool that, like, yeah, Bolton, you you play any of your charge cards, and if your opponent blocks, you are you have free go again. No, because it has to be during the reaction step. Oh, right. Oh, I was yeah. thinking of Breaking oh, yeah. Scales when I said yeah, Breeze yeah, yeah. Scalers, by the way. Breaking Scales is the card I was thinking of for Ninja. Yeah, that one does work. That is, that yeah. is yeah, an that actual one interaction. Works. Yeah, the Bolton thing doesn't work. It doesn't have yeah. to be in a reaction too. You could give us something like lunging press. You just do it during reaction. Yeah. So maybe lunging maybe now you're running lunging is, press and talisman in your lunging deck. Lunging press but... is a, an attack reaction. Oh, is Light, this okay? Lightning press is lightning press. Is not. I think this falls in the same trap a lot of these cards have. They're pretty good in the vacuum. It's just where do you put them? And I yeah. think where you put them now is just not very good. Yeah, it's these just somehow not worth the time to put them on the board. Like you're, it is you're a having a pretty weak turn if you're playing this and then doing whatever else. Nick knack bric a brac just keeps getting better. Yeah. That's the only way any of these work is if you just take seven of them out of your deck and put them on the field all at once. And you go, <laughs> try to attack me, and I'm going to activate these three, and when I'm attacking you, I'm going to do these three over here. No. Um, also, so far, uh, potions have all been blue and ta talismans have all been yellow. Who knows yeah. if they'll stick to that theme, but... It could all just be every talisman we see from now on is yellow. Every potion's blue. Amulets are also blue. What's that like one from Arcane Rising? Um, Talisting? Oh, no. No. The item? The I think it's Talismanic Limb. No, no. The super rare item. With barrier? One oh, Rusted barrier. Relic? Yeah, yeah. Rusted and Relic, every, yeah. every Rusted Relic has been a heaping pile of shit. That's true. And also blue. Was it blue? I thought it was red. No, it's blue. It was blue. Oh, it's blue. Yeah, so it's a, I give this card a three. small pile of shit, not heaping. <laughs> Relax. I'm going to give it a four. <laughs> three, four. Yeah, I think this has a huge future. Um, for now, it seems not good. So I think I'm putting most cards there in the four or five area. So I'll say four. Yeah, I think four is fair because, like, there are some things you can see the use for, but it's, like, it's not nearly impactful enough to play a whole card down and later get go again. It's kind of like, like, we don't play Talisman of Lightning in Lightning decks, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a blue, which is just better resource-wise. And you control when you activate it. Yeah. And so, like, eh. Next. This round's on me. Okay, this is a super interesting card. 
Uh, blue, one cost, generic action, blocks for three. It gets a majestic. Um, each hero draws a card. Until the start of your next turn, attacks that target you have minus one attack. So, like, if you don't take one less damage, they have minus one attack. I think the card's pretty good. Go again. Yeah, I, think yeah, I don't think it's... I don't think it's amazing, but I think it's pretty good. I mean, obviously, you don't want other people to draw, but the uh, the attacks getting minus one makes your breaking points so much better. It also nerfs Kadachis and nerfs Prismatic Shields. It, uh, it seems pretty good. Yep. Um, yep. Blocks for three. Said, Blue. All of those matchups where people are swinging little tiny things at you that are really obnoxious. Um, obviously, Ninja has a really hard time activating Mask for a turn. Um, mm -hmm. Prism does literally no damage to you if they're on the aura plant. Obviously, we're, we're talking like control class playing this against Prism, like Guardian or something. That's otherwise Prism's hitting you with heralds, but right. Um, yeah, the the breakpoint thing, taking like Rune Blade stuff from four to three, and Ninja stuff. Um, this is just like all around a Guardian card yet again. Just really good Guardian <laughs> stuff. Um, it's a good blue. It is going to be interesting to see how the giving your opponent a card part of it works because like you make their turn better but like they may not necessarily be able to use all of those cards obviously someone like ninja is going to use those cards or briar or something but the minus one damage on everything might be worth it yeah all of a sudden your blocks become a lot better when they're doing the, all the four 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 <laughs> all of a sudden you get to block with a single card for each one yeah this kind of negates um bolton's hero power a little bit too yeah, so you can you can freely defend with attack action cards. That's true. Yep, because it won't be above what it was. So, yeah, you can. Uh, it is uh, very interesting against Bolton as well. I think if anything, it does go in Guardian sideboards for Prism because this is their best shot right now at dealing with Prism. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yep, this and Forge that like Forge for War tech we saw on old him and uh, this like you could survive Spectral Shields for quite some time and just like keep swinging stuff at them trying to get those under control the downside's pretty big i mean if you happen to you want to play this late when they have shields right when they have prismatic shields but if you play this late and they happen to hit like a tome it's going to be rough <laughs> uh yeah, I, I mean this is obviously to play auras with. yeah even just having more cards is good this is obviously like a snap include for playing valda but i know most of us don't really care about blitz yeah, seems good. I don't think it's amazing. I'll give it like a six. The 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 thing that's gonna make this super super interesting and probably less powerful than most people think it is is the giving your opponent a card. You're yeah. not. You're going to go into their turn with a four. You're gonna have your regular four cards and maybe one in arsenal, and they could have as high as a five card hand with a card in arsenal. So like you, the downside might, is is your utter huge. annihilation. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, again, you're taking less damage from their attacks, but like one extra card can make a mediocre play into just a galaxy play. Like that extra yeah. Yeah, resource, that extra action point, something like that. Let's say they have yeah. their four card hand and the card in Arsenal. They're all fours normally. So now you get to go block, 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 all for three. But now they have a fifth attack that gets to go through. So it's, yeah, the downside is big, big. Which is why I think the card's really good, but I'm still only going to give it a six. I think I'm. I think I'm there on the six too. Uh, yeah, six. That's what I was thinking. I can agree with that. Bam! Look at all this agreeableness. All right. Yay! Oh. Cards for me that make me sad. Root cards. <laughs> I didn't even know the blue one was out there. I thought we only saw the red one. Wait, neither did I. Why is this blue? <laughs> well, all right. Well, you're never gonna play this card. Okay. Well, yeah, this blue one's not getting played. Pretend Two we're looking at red. Four? Come on, guys. Definitely gonna play red. So wild ride when Bill, you attack a wild ride, draw a card. A two for four. It's one for four. Oh, okay. My bad. <laughs> wild ride two, <clears throat> two costs. Brute attack action. Red swings for six. When you attack with wild ride, draw a card, then discard a random card. If a card with six or more attack is discarded this way, wild ride gains. Go again. In brute. The game plan, you're just going to assume always Red Wild Ride is two for six go again. Two for six and That doesn't block. Yep. Yeah, it does not block. It's pretty big. Does not block. So what, this is pulping 
not worse. Is it worse? Because the go again's already there. You hit the same trigger, well, but the go again's already the pulping, there. The pulping also is less of a guarantee because you draw a card. This also does Then discard it random. Oh, this so does draw a card? Oh, yeah. Never mind. They're the same, but pulping is better. Yeah, so really, do you want pulping four through six? Over what you currently have access to? Then it, this not blocking is the problem. Unless yeah, we get some fuel to be able to race harder. Because right now I can race pretty good, but most aggro decks just, you know, beat me to the finish line just barely. So why mm -hmm. don't you want this guaranteed go again over the dominant? That's go, a red. Conditional go again. Oh, over the dominant conditional? Because, I mean, the dominant conditional go again is going to pull more cards. Is it? If they have a uh, attack reaction in Arsenal. Nobody's going to block Wild Ride. Pulping is in there to pull their cards. Or be big on the uh, Blood Rush turns, but I guess this could be big on Blood Rush turns too. It's hard to say. I I'm probably going to play it because I think I have slots that I could use it for. But I know it's like not stellar, but like go again seems good in Brute. The you're just creeping into that like 12 damage per turn range. Like this, this yeah. might take the slot of the aforementioned Swing Fist Link later, which is one for four, discard a card, go again. Yeah, I mean, I'm I think this card seems good. I don't know what Reinhardt decks are looking like these days, or not if Navia even wants this. Really, what killed but my soul? Six go is pretty good. Um, you also get to so on a two card hand. Well, now you draw then discard. You have to have a three card hand for this. Yeah, I'm not stoked on this card. <laughs> but I also don't play root, so I don't really uh, know exactly where you want to be with this. I think the go again guaranteed, well, not guaranteed, let's say you're hitting the trigger, which you are most of the time, but there is the variance of drawing that card. Um, the go again's great. I, I value the go again on this. I mean, I'm not a brute player, but I value the go again on this more than the pulping because, like, I can soul shield the pulping and it doesn't do anything. Um, I see the how they each have their own plus, and they're kind of, like, really, really close. They both don't block. They're both just trying to get go again. Um, it's just like pulping, but different is kind of how I see it. And it's I'm like five uh, is kind of where I'm at. I'll give it a six. And the only reason I'll give it a six is because three reds are going into my deck right away, at least for testing. I'd give it a five, too. Testable, I, Bill says. Otherwise, I'd be on five. 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 Sad brute day. But I gotta give I gotta give the brute card a higher score. You heard it here, folks. Bias. <laughs> okay, this is the last card we're reviewing, and I don't uh, think we need to really go over much. I'll give it a one. The first legendary, and you're gonna give it a one. Give yeah, it a it's wow. not a good card. You got an L in the bottom, and you're gonna give it a one. Yeah, yeah for a loss. Long. And so it's got one value. defense. I uh, could have two. It's literally uh, garbage. I don't know about that. I can't read. Arcane Barrier 3? Who's even doing magic damage? <laughs> we have Arcane Lantern now. We don't need Skullcap anymore. Yeah. The, every <laughs> anymore? What are you talking about? Every card we just review edges this card out. I'd rather play Amulet of Haven Call in my deck without Rally the Rear Guard anywhere in my deck than play this card. <laughs> it's a little, that's a little much. You heard it here first. On Card Salad, Arcanite Skullcap, weakest card in the set. One. So there's not much hold to say about this one. If you haven't seen the spoiler, it has EVR on the bottom. We're getting it in this set. We're getting Arcanite Skullcap. Reprint. Yep. But uh, yeah, we're all in this group pretty low on Skullcap. We're all on the same conclusion that Skullcap is a good card, but it's good because we just don't have other helms. It's just good old block two, then block one, just straight up three life. The Arcane Barrier and... is like almost irrelevant. Yeah. Most yeah. I mean, the Not fact that Ranger realm. doesn't use it, because of New Horizon, it shows its strength. Yeah. Not that Ranger's a worthwhile class at all, but, you know. We just, we just need more Helms. I mean, the card's like, okay, but we just need more Helms. So we're all pretty low on the card. In a vacuum, we're all pretty low on the card. And yeah, and I'll give it a two. Oh. <laughs> wow, breaking the deal. All right, one, 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 two. It's still three life. You gotta have your three own life opinions, don't you, Mr. Brandon? <laughs> three life is okay. <laughs> but I think yeah. as we get more and more helms for each class, it's just gonna be three life. 
Merchant will probably have this until the day the game dies. If you're um, watching this in six months when seven of these cards are banned, let us know how stupid we are in the comments. Yeah, Amulet of Haven Call, like, we're sorry, we made a mistake. We made a mistake. We made a mistake. Amulet no, are too good. Brick a brack, knick knack, brick a brack. It turns out pulling 40 amulets out of your deck is not okay. We're sorry. <laughs> I'm I'm down to knickknacks and brick bracks, honestly. We're, but we're uh, gonna have a we're gonna have a themed armory night where everyone has to play a deck themed around knickknack brick a brack. Yeah, no. I'm down. No, I'm good. No, no. I think I'm busy that night. You don't get to say no. When is it? Yeah, I'm busy. Definitely. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Thanks well, for watching, everybody. Yeah, thanks for watching. We will be back. Uh, this was like two plus days of spoilers, so the other ones will be a little uh, more tight knit. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, more Everfest spoilers coming up. Thanks, guys. Bye.